Hello and welcome to another Sea Trade Talks, this time focusing on the expedition sector and hosted by me, Liz Gammon, Sea Trade's expedition ambassador and independent cruise industry expert and advisor. In this edition, we're going to focus on the latest white paper, the third in our series on expedition cruising, which looks beyond the poles and the opportunities for expedition crafted itineraries outside of the polar regions. It's available for download on Sea Trade News website under the downloads tab. So without further ado, I'm going to jump straight in and answer a few questions relating to our subject, expedition cruising beyond the poles. So why are expedition lines ramping up this side of their offerings? Well, the answer to that is actually quite simple, it's because they must. The fleet is expanding and since 2019, 29 new expedition ships have entered the market, bringing the total number of vessels currently believed to be sailing up to 88 with a further 13 expected to enter the market by the end of 2024. We really are at an interesting time in the development in this sector of the cruise industry. We have a whole new fleet of Lux Expedition vessels, something that around 15 years ago was totally unheard of. This new expedition market or Lux Expedition has landed and let's face it, there's only a few months out of the year that these ships can actually go to Antarctica and the Arctic, which is why there is a definite opportunity for destinations outside of those polar regions to get excited about promoting themselves to this sector. This is something that, that we're going to be building on and addressing during the Beyond the Poles workshop that's going to be taking place during Sea Trade Cruise Med in Malaga next month. This is when we're going to be looking into the opportunities and work collectively to come up with ideas and solutions that will help ports big and small, destinations and suppliers create a realistic and sustainable expedition product. So, instead of icebergs and penguins, what does a typical Beyond the Poles itinerary and excursion look like? Again, the future is bright as more and more lines are venturing east and west and everywhere in between. But to cite a few examples, I know of one 14-day expedition cruise to Japan during cherry blossom season that visits the Yakumo Mura village at Mutsui to learn the art of paper making, stopping at the Ogim Folk Museum at Sado Island to hear local farmers talking about rice paddies. And another is a West African expedition to Cap Verde and the Bisigos Islands, looking out for seasonal wildlife such as nesting loggerhead turtles between June and October. Whilst another that caught my eye included diving at Belize's Blue Hole, which is one of the top 10 dive sites in the world, and exploring the Arabian coastline with stops in Dubai, Doha and Abu Dhabi, all the while exploring the local sites and cultures in the more intimate and in-depth fashion that really is associated with expedition cruising. So can a traditional cruise port and destination become attractive for expedition ships and what should they do landside to explore opportunities in this sector? Well, according to the experts I spoke to when researching the Beyond the Poles white paper that has recently been published, the answer is a resounding yes. Expedition is well suited to all destinations. There are so many places that can be discovered or rediscovered on board expedition ships with those smaller vessels giving unparalleled access to wildlife sites and communities. So as what you can do landside to explore opportunities in this sector, then it's important to remember that expedition is all about those authentic cultural encounters. It's a deeper destination immersion and discovering those hidden gems that perhaps only you, the local experts, are able to reveal. So, what do destinations need to do to entice expedition lines to call? Well, I think it's all about looking at your destination or port differently. And uh, in order to do that, you need to get acquainted with what expedition cruising is all about, you know, learn a bit about it because it is different to your classic cruising, perhaps that you're used to. So do a little bit of exploring on your own. Have a think about community engagement and how you can introduce expedition guests to your locality in a genuine way. Are there any unique foods or festivals that you feel would be perfectly suited and matched to expedition? There's a lot to get excited about, and this is exactly why we have chosen to focus on Beyond the Poles in the upcoming expedition workshop Beyond the Poles to be held at Sea Trade Cruise Med from 10.30 until 12.30 on Thursday, September the 15th. But it is going to be a little bit different from what you're used to. 
there will be a fast-paced panel discussion to kick us off, featuring some highly regarded expedition leaders and trailblazers before we break off into groups and take the conversation further, exploring the challenges and the opportunities associated with the very things I've been talking about here, how to get noticed, how to create a sustainable expedition shore excursion, how to involve your local community and how to really rethink your current cruise project, all of these things and more. And I wish I could tell you more, but like any good expedition, these things are best discovered along the way. So I do hope that number one, you download the white paper in order to learn a little bit more. And that is uh, available on the Sea Trade Cruise News website where you just click on the downloads tab. And I hope very much to see you then uh, at the expedition workshop at Cruise Med, September the 15th from 10.30 to 12.30. I really look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.